Hi guys and welcome back to Sisters in the City with me Anna Vakili and me Mandy Vakili. Oh my god, it's so weird to be back. Yeah, I know. It's we took such a big break because obviously we had to pre-record before we went on holiday and then we always have a week off between seasons because I got a lot of messages like why have your why where's your new episode? But just in case you don't know, when we end the season we always take one week off. Yeah, I mean, it's weird. I don't know. Is it a good idea taking a break? Because I don't know. I feel like I kind of lost my mojo. It's true because you're like, when you're in the swing of things. When you're in the swing of things and you're used to doing it. How long has it been right now? It's been like at least four weeks or three weeks. Yeah, it's too long. I don't feel like a podcaster anymore. I don't know who I am. <laughs> I know who keeps trying to come on my lap. If you're watching, you know, if anyone listens to this, I recommend you watch it too. Yeah. <laughs> this is here. Mr. Kobe. And he just wants to be on my lap. Don't so you? sweet. The sweetest thing. So um, guys, yeah, we are on, we are on season six now, and we're really excited. We want you guys obviously to let us know in the comments if there's anything in particular you really want to see from us in this season. Um, but we thought we'd just do a little catch up this episode. Obviously, we've been away, and just you know, catch up with guys, you guys. I don't want to be back here. Like I am depressed as fuck being back here. Fucking hell! Not even five minutes has gone by without you saying that word. Depressed word. What I'm, is it with you? That word. That word. I'm using it lightly. Like I'm not obviously depressed. Yeah, I, mean, I just don't want to be back in London. Yeah, I know. It's, like I love like being in Dubai. Like I miss it so much already. I honestly feel like in my heart, and in I just feel like I'm an Emirati. <laughs> I feel like this time next year I'm going to be living in Dubai I just I just know it I feel it I know it this time next year I will be living in Dubai I'm manifesting it it's going to happen like I do not want to live in this country anymore me too at all. I'm like trying to brainwash ginger beer to move to Dubai like I'm really working on it planting seeds yeah so fingers crossed and we're going to be doing this from Dubai how mad yeah, I, exactly we'll we like, can do this from anywhere yeah we could we really could. We'll be sisters in Dubai. So guys, I went on holiday obviously with Gingerbeard and his friends and one of his girl- his friends' girlfriends. And well, actually, I didn't go with them. I went with Gingerbeard and they were there at the same time. So it was like kind of a group holiday, but not really. Um, and then Anna came after, but we overlapped for a day. But then I decided to extend. So which- Mandy ended up staying the whole time. Which was so good for me in a way because leading up to the holiday, there was a few things that happened. Like, obviously, I was going away with all single girls. And I now realize that was a really bad idea because certain things that they wanted to do, like, let's say they want to go for dinner with boys, which is absolutely, like, fine. I would do that if I was single. Um, obviously, I can't go to cows like, huh, I'm going for dinner with, like, a bunch of single, like, single girls and single boys. Yeah, it's dinner's, bit, like, way too It's intimate. a bit dis- it's disrespectful. So I would have to sit out. Anyway, that didn't actually that happen. That didn't even happen. Yeah, that didn't happen. Because they, they, they ain't about that life. <laughs> it didn't happen. But luckily I had Mandy with me anyway. It just felt good to have her with me. It felt good for me just being there. Like, I'd rather be there than be back here with all my friends in Dubai and I'm going to be in London doing what on my own? Like, fuck that. Yeah. So anyway, like... So she had two weeks basically in Dubai. She's I so lucky. I hated, hated, hated though being in Dubai like without like Anna or like someone that was like my person. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like a few things that happened. Like, oh God, how do I get into this? Like a lot of the time throughout the holiday, I went there, yeah, feeling like so confident, so sexy, yeah, like I'm the shit. And then a few things happened throughout the holiday that made me feel like an ugly, obese giant. Mandy, shut up. I swear to God. And um, like, how do I say? So it was like one of Gingerbeard's like friends that like, made a few remarks a few times about like, what was it? Like, I like skinny, yeah. Uh, like, I like skinny. Like, I could never be with like a, like a curvy tall, a big tall girl. Do you know what I mean? And things like that. And like, I was just standing there being my big tall self. <laughs> So I was like, just like, I'm just standing there towering over this guy saying this. And then um, I just thought, is, so, w- w- was, is he short? Yeah, well, you know him, Anna. Just shut up. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> I always feel like usually, firstly, it's either short guys or, obviously, what no, you know, Anna, there's a lot of short guys. If you're a short guy. That would be down for no, being but, with like, a big tall girl. But like majority me. of short guys are obviously going to want to be with a short girl. Yeah, 100%. It's like how we're tall girls and we want to be with a tall guy. Yeah, it's but just the way that's he was how it like, works. He was like, fuck that man. Like, some 
like big thing. No, I'd never like I'd maybe fuck that. I'd never stay with that or like all this shit. And I'm just standing there. Like, do you know what I mean? That's like me saying that about short guys. Like, I wouldn't say that if there was a short guy around. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's a bit like if you're if you're in a group, right? And there's like a short guy there, you wouldn't be like, oh, I'd never get. Oh God, no oh, way. Yeah. Ew. Ew. <laughs> like under five foot eight. Ew. Yeah, you know. What and like if they're standing, and they're standing there, like it's really awkward. Or one thing as well is like if like for example, there's a girl that's like bigger than me. I never go on about my weight too much. Like, I think that's also another thing. Mate, 100%. Like, because I think that's a bit, makes people feel, un- like, don't make people feel uncomfortable. Like, if there's a girl bigger than me sitting down, I'm not going to be like, I feel, so, I'm so fat, I'm so yeah. this, I'm that. Like, I might say that if I'm around people that are smaller than me I or mean, my I people. I accidentally do do that, though. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like, yeah, I accidentally do do that. <laughs> like, I want to see for the accident. Then I'm, it's an accident. Yeah. But anyway, like, I just wouldn't have done that, do you know what I mean? But this person did that. Did Gingerbread make you feel good? Like, Gingerbread throughout the whole holiday was obviously like, come here, you sexy, you're so beautiful, like a big bum, like hugging me and making like constantly, you're the most beautiful girl ever. Like from morning till night, he'd compliment me. But like, I feel like in that moment, like it should have said something, do you know what I mean? Like (laughs) all my boys, my other boys, they should have said something. But maybe they just didn't catch on. Like the way it's affecting me, people aren't going to notice these, like these things said in a conversation, they're going to notice, I'm going to notice. Yeah. And then, Obviously, because I'm on holiday with, like, these boys and then, like, his girlfriend who's, like, really small and petite and slim. Like, it made me feel like even more of a giant. (laughs) Yeah. But it's just one of those things, like, I know how you feel because even when I was in Love Island, like, no one made me feel like that on purpose and no one was actually rude or disrespectful. But everyone, like, as you know, in Love Island, their type is petite, petite, petite. And, like, I'm not petite. Yeah. And um, not only am I not petite, I'm curvy. So I absolutely in Love Island felt like an absolute like a giant (laughs) yeah and it's so funny because every single person that sees me in real life like they literally I swear 90% of them like what you're not even as like tall as I thought you were and you're not even like big like I thought you were on camera it's just because when you're standing next Next to someone someone that's that's five foot two and skinny yeah you feel like and I felt like throughout the holiday (laughs) Like, you know, like the Hulk, yeah, as he's like tearing through his clothes. I felt like I was in slow motion, like growing. <laughs> I felt like I was growing through this holiday. Like every day and every <laughs> night, I was just getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> and then another occasion, he was like about his girlfriend, yeah. He was like, like, she's the biggest girl like I've ever been with. Like, first of all, which is quite disrespectful to her anyway, yeah. yeah but like, whatever. That's their own That's thing. That's their... And then biggest girl you've ever been with, like, she's literally the size of one of my legs. Like, what? <laughs> Are you joking? And I was like, yeah, like, she's the biggest I'd ever go with. Like, and the biggest I've ever... And then, like, I don't know how the skinny topic was. Like, I like... Because I pointed at a girl, I was like, oh, for, to one of the boys, I was like, oh, is she your kind of type? And then he was like, yeah, but he was like, no, she's too skinny. But then the short one who was making me feel like the Hulk holiday, he was like, I like skinny. Like, I like skinny. <laughs> at every opportunity. At every opportunity. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> But do you know what? Everyone's got a type. It's like, there are people that like, I've, I've, there's so many guys I've dated that as soon as they see me and they're like, oh my God, I like the fact that you're tall. Like, they like the fact that you're tall. They like the fact that you're curvy. You know, they, yeah. there's so many different type people that have different types. And a bitch likes to eat. Like, I just like, <laughs> they, I like to eat. It's like, I really like it. No, but honestly, you know, it, um, there's guys that are really sure and they'll go up to you and they'll be like, they hit on you because they're so confident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had a lot of Do you know what I mean? I have to look like, sorry. Even my boyfriend, Kalswick's not really that tall. Like, yeah. honestly, the other day, the security guard would say, yes, you know, about Kalswick. He might be a little man, but he's like very, and I was like, wow, he's actually a little, like to some people, he's a little man, but he's so confident, mm. you know, like he owns it. I get what you're saying. It is a lot to do with confidence, but you know what? Like, that happened and... I had to just like take take the fucking L's and just go because I feel like I couldn't create a bad vibe. Obviously. You know, I'm the kind of person that if I say something, it's going to create a bad vibe. Yeah, but obviously you're on holiday. It's just not a nice feeling, obviously, when you're on holiday. Right. I love the word obviously today, I realised. Have then, you noticed? Oh, I've said obviously a lot. No, I haven't. <laughs> and then I'm just looking at my notepad because I've got some notes. And then the icing on the cake. Oh, the icing on the cake. No, that wasn't even the icing on the cake. Things got worse. <laughs> the Hulk got bigger. <laughs> the Hulk... Like, grew so it was like I think the day before the last night yeah and we were at Verdi and the what should we call this guy Who? what should we call this guy call what him is, um, Arthur Arthur I don't know why Arthur just came to her head okay fine call him Arthur so Arthur um, Arthur's girlfriend and we were in Verdi and then 
Arthur's girlfriend and Arthur's girlfriend's friend I went to the toilet and they started talking to me and they basically brought up Gingerbeard's ex-girlfriend because they know his ex-girlfriend. And to be fair, she had actually brought him up a few times throughout the holiday, which did, did kind of annoy me a little bit because it kind of made me feel like this was like Gingerbeard's like true love of his life. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because like the context of her bringing him up was like, oh yeah, um, she really like hurts Gingerbeard or like... I just... Well, the thing is, if I meet a girl and I know her boyfriend's ex... Yeah. Girlfriend. I just, maybe if I bring it up, if I do, which I probably won't, but if I do, I'll probably bring it up once. Yeah. If they ask me, to be honest, I wouldn't bring it up. I wouldn't bring it up. Yeah, if they yeah. ask me, I might bring it up once, but I wouldn't keep bringing it up. So it is, I don't know. Anyway, she brought up a few times, but she, I don't, it wasn't in a malicious way. Like, it was, it did make me feel a little bit like insecure, I guess, because they were together a long time. And then the, the way she talked about the, their relationship was like, as if like, yeah. Gingerbeard is really, really, I don't know into her and hurt after it ended or whatever. So, anyway, it was brought up again. And then the the girlfriend's friend said to me, <laughs> yeah, this one really dug deep, yeah. She was like, oh, well, like, she's the opposite of you. Like, she's complete opposite of you. <laughs> she's, like, really skinny and petite. <laughs> I was like, is this fucking happening again? <laughs> And you know, this time, drunk as I am, I started crying. That's horrible. I know, I cried. And I wasn't even there to be with her because obviously I joined, I I flew to Dubai the next day and I wasn't even there to be with her. I which know, was my upset. cousin was there, but I didn't tell my cousin because I knew shit would just like pop off. Yeah. And then anyway, I saw Ginger was crying to Gingerbeard and like, you know, just milking even more because I just wanted to bear attention. And then he's just like, you know, saying all the things that you want to hear. And then that was like for me, oh my God, this holiday cannot make me feel more gigantic than I have felt so now. Like, Which is ridiculous. Yeah? Because if you actually see Mandy or meet her... I think I'm fucking fit. Yeah, like she's fit. I just... It's just ridiculous because... You I know am what? fit. It's firstly like people that have made you feel like this. It's people that have made you feel like this. Maybe you have a little... Obviously, you're insecure right now. You're not... You're in your best. eyes, your best. So you had a small that. insecurity, but that insecurity just grew because of other people. Right? I came back from Dubai. Not, do we ha- not only do we have social media, we have other people as well. And your own insecurity is just going to be like, whoa. But obviously, I'm, if I have to look down to speak to someone, like they're a lot smaller than me, they're going to see me like that in a way, aren't they? Just the way, I, you know what I mean? They're going to see me like big. And... Who saw you like big? Maybe because oh, they're the... shorter than, do you know what I mean? Because they're small. Yeah, okay. I don't know, but whatever it was, it made it was like she's the opposite of you. She's skinny and petite. And like, oh, have you not what seen? What do you even say I to was that? Like, I don't like, know oh, what that's she looks nice. like. I was like, I don't know what she looks like. I don't want to know what she looks like. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I've gone two years. I don't know what she looks like. She could be sitting next to me on the train and I wouldn't know. That's hilarious for me, yeah? Yeah. Um, and then the girl like called... And apparently she... Yeah. She used to follow you. She follows you or like... She, she follows me, whatever. She used to follow anyway, you. I've got no beef with this girl. I don't even know this girl. Yeah, I know. Like, do you know what I mean? Bless her. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Bless her, so patronizing. Anyway, <laughs> when we left the toilet, the friend like called me over and then she called me over and I went over to her and she was like showing a picture of Gingerbread's ex to me. When you said that, you didn't want to see it. I said, I don't, I don't want to see a picture. But you know what was really weird? It was like, after you leave the toilet after like five minutes, like you just, who, for, who does that, right? <laughs> but anyway, it's, she did that. And funny thing is, like, I'll never remember that face. Still. Never. She could literally, literally be right next to me for a whole flight and I wouldn't know who it is. Maybe she's got one of those plain Jane faces. <laughs> Do you know no, what I mean? But bless her, yeah? No beef. Bless her. No, no beef. Anyway. <laughs> well, anyway, I Imagine, just... Imagine, like, there's... Oh, God, fuck it. What? Like, I'm out here, like, just being with me now. How? Do you know what I mean? Well, just because you and said like, you wouldn't remember her face. People that, there I, might be people that won't remember your face. Everyone's remembering my fucking face. Okay. <laughs> my big, gigantic fucking face. Everyone's fucking You have actually got a really nice, slim face. So I've got the, like, bigger face. Mm. Um, Wait, it got worse. My oh, no. <laughs> For God's sake. Do you remember? And then we met that Iranian girl. Yeah. And she said to me, despite me telling her about a thousand times I have a boyfriend, that she wants to find me a, a rich Iranian husband. She wants me to find a rich <laughs> husband, a Iranian rich man. Iranian girls sometimes, like some of the girls from Iran, like they can be so like in their own bubble, in their own world. It's like you could be speaking to them and they'd be like, oh, and they always talk like this, Iranian girls that are from Iran. They're always like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, we call it Nazmi Konan. So it was like, I was like, oh, how is Dubai if I move here like with my boyfriend? Yes, if you come here, you will find someone. I was like, oh, I'm coming here with my boyfriend. So what do you think it's going to be like if I call my boyfriend? I, 
I don't know, but if you come, you will definitely find someone. And this went on like about 10 times. <laughs> anyway, I come back to London and she was like, look, some guys I know, like they want to meet you, but you need to lose weight. I like, you need to lose weight. I was like, what? She was like, you need to lose five kilos. She was like, five kilos, baby. You need to lose at least five kilos. Then I was wow. like, if this many people are saying it to me, they're trying to tell me something, you know? So bitches on a diet. <laughs> Well, I mean, when I left the holiday, Mandy was like, I mean, you did look really big in a bikini this holiday. You said that to me? Out of all of the other holidays I've been on with you. Yeah, she was like, I didn't want to say it to you while you were away. I didn't want to ruin your holiday. But, you know, you did look, you didn't look as nice as you usually do on a night out. And you look bigger than yeah. usually in a but bikini. if my sister says that to me, it's okay. It's cool. Or my cousin or my friends. If I don't, if I'm not your fucking friend and you say that to me, like, it's not on. It's not on. Yeah. Anyway, basically, me and Mandy, I you didn't even need to tell me that because I knew myself. Like I know, I can feel it. Yeah, but I think I would... in a bikini, I'm bigger. I was bigger than I'm usually am. Mm. But it's fine. We're gonna work towards Mykonos in a uh, two months. Now. Two months. We are gonna be our best selves. Right. But you know what? It's mad, Mandy. Like neither the size that we are now, we are popping, and I don't give a I shit. I still fuck your daddy. Whoever, who is, whoever wants to say whatever they want, I don't care. Like We're still we the are. shit. Exactly. I've got personality, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? All of this body needs to feel this big personality. <laughs> God, it's not going to fit in a little frame. I literally, I knew, like I said, I knew before I was going away that I'm, you know, I can tell because when I'm ordering sizes, I've sized up. I felt like I was a shit before I well, went away. When I went away, I was like, even though I know that I am bigger, like I want to have fun on my holiday. I want to enjoy myself. I don't want to be thinking about my weight. But then That's at the right. same time, I don't have what you had. And I don't have people constantly going on about it. Yeah. So it was easier for me to just enjoy it. Like, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, we spent all this time worrying about a bit of weight that we've added, a bit of weight that we, you know, and all this stuff. Life is so short. Life is so short, yeah. And you're away on holiday, yeah, that you look forward yeah. to sometimes. People look forward to holidays, like some people book a year in advance. Are you telling me you're going to go on a holiday you've been looking forward to for so long and then the whole time you're away, you're going to be thinking about Anna, do you your know what weight? it is? Yeah, I feel like people have like these high expectations of us. What do you mean? And from of our appearance. Do you know what I'm trying to say? What do you mean? Like, as someone, you, you're an influencer, you're on Love Island, we're like on Instagram, pictures. Like, we're expected to meet a certain standard more than like, the, like a normal average I don't average think person, so, Mandy, because there's a plenty of influencers that I've seen and they don't look, they're not slim and they don't look like their pictures or if anything, we look more like our pictures than a yeah, lot of people. So. 100%. I don't think it's other people's expectations. I think it's expectations we have of ourselves in our head. Maybe. That we should be like, like let a, a bitch way. live. Do you know what I mean? No, it's not, it's not who let a bitch live. You let your bitch live. And you it's let hard yourself to do that when live. when everyone around you makes you feel a type of way. I literally, on my last day, an Iranian girl told me I have to lose weight. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? From a stranger. So, yeah, well, I, that's what I'm trying to say. It's, it's not right because... What we're gonna look back on these times and be like, what the hell? We spent those these times like right? worrying about. I look back on videos and pictures of me six years ago. I was like ten kg lighter, and I was remember Being in those. Miserable. Yeah, I remember in those times I was miserable and like I was moaning and I was this me and too. that. And I'm like, you know what? What the hell? That's what freaks me I was out. Like, that wish... freaks me out the most, yeah, because I look back at my pictures when I was, my body was. I would say now I look back at like perfect, but I remember hating my body then. So what is that? We're going to look back on these times one day, not because we're going to like be bigger, but we're going to look back and like, oh, we were so young and we were so carefree. And we were like, yeah, why didn't we enjoy those times? And we were worrying about stupid shit. Yeah. I always say this, but we're going to die. I need to we're all going to die. I need to enjoy my life. And you know what? Ginger beard. Ginger beard. Ginger beard. He's so sweet to me throughout that holiday. You see, you do say good things about him, by the way. Like, I don't say anything good about him. I was like, yeah, you do. I'm going to try now, innit? Put a little bit of good in there. So yeah. sweet. Like, literally, no, when you someone makes you feel like you're the most beautiful girl in the world, like, I can't explain to you, like, compliments from the moment I'm awake with my hair and a scruffy bun in the pool. And he's like, I've never seen well, a, Mandy, anyone what, as more beautiful. Have you seen the memes? Have you seen the memes Mandy, where the girl's please, like... Please tell me the story that you said that day when you, like, what? you walked into the... Um, Arthur's girlfriend, Arthur and his girlfriend room, and she looks so. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I was so like, funny. Me and Ginger <laughs> a bit. lot of girls will relate to that, you know, because we're not the only. We are like most girls, really. Yes, hundred so percent. So me like, and Gingerbread went into Arthur's 
like hotel suite with where he is with his girlfriend. And I was literally, if you saw me, oh God, it literally, my hair was everywhere, yeah? And it's scruffy bun here. I had some big t-shirt dress that you get from like Primark. And then big yeah, they're the best. <laughs> you know? They're the best. Yeah, it's like a balloon. Especially on holiday. I was like a balloon. You know, with the tits and ass as well. It just, it's just like a balloon. <laughs> and then we walked in and then his girlfriend, she was like in some like satin pink, like, pajama almost like lingerie vibes. Yeah. And it was like shorts and a top with no bra on. Like, you can like see the shape of everything, like long, wet hair, everything. Like, Perfect. she looked like something out of the movie, yeah? And then it was me. <laughs> and then I was like, this is how I should be maybe around my hotel room with ginger beard. Like, maybe I'm doing things wrong. No. Do you know what I mean? Uh, that's bullshit. Trust me. No, just be yourself. Anyway, it look, was, I'm all for like. I feel like I'm a bit too scruffy though. Sometimes. Yeah, I'm all. For, I mean? I'm all for like. Don't let yourself get too scruffy. Don't get too comfortable. But at the same time, you don't want to live your life just like trying to be. But that she hot. didn't like. She was trying. She's, I just feel like maybe I should. You know, with I should be the kind of person that actually gets up in the morning and puts on a nice lounge wear. But do it for and yourself. Brushes my hair nicely. Do it for yourself. Don't do it for Gingerbeard. Do yeah, it for 100%. yourself. Gingerbeard love me like this, boy. Just like this, I've been living in that yard like it's my own. Do you know what I was thinking? Big yard. Do you know what I was thinking today, actually, when I was getting ready for the podcast? I was thinking, I wish I could like get up in the morning and get ready like this all the time. Do you know what I love about like in the 1960s, 50s and like basically the olden times, like women you would wake up and they'd get ready. They'll change out of their pajamas and they'll get into some day clothes right. in the morning. They'll they'll fix their hair up and like you don't have to put a full face of makeup, just a little bit of like blusher and they'll look presentable all That's day. That's yeah? I think is important. Have you seen mum, yeah? On her days off even. My mum is a 67 or something year old woman she wakes up in the mornings and yeah. she puts on clothes, even if she's going to be at home all day, and she just looks presentable. And she I like that, you know. All day, yeah. And I like that because I'm always in scruffy track suits, hair scruffy. Like, it's just too... Scru I like, it doesn't make... It make it's, you have a... It basically, she used to always say it though, Mommy, yeah, she's like, as well. She's she, like, you can't be rolling around the house like, in these tracksuits every day. You know, me and tracksuits. Yeah. We're a team. I can't I separate it, from a tracksuit. For me, suit. yeah, it's not even about the guy. It's about yeah. me. It's about how I feel. Yeah. You know what I mean? When I look in the mirror, if I I just feel better, you know, it's a, it just has an effect on your mental health. You know what they say, do it for yourself. Like, I even 100% you, agree. You know when you wear like single girls, what, they can't wear but nice you know lingerie? Like, it's just like that whole walking into that and seeing the other girl in the hotel room how she was, you know, I also saw in like Cove, when we went to Cove Beach, yeah, like we were like, like by the end of the pool party, yeah, you should have seen us. Wet hair, we just our um, makeup everywhere. We just oh fucked, yeah, dancing. And then there was girls. It was like eight p.m. still at this point, yeah, and they were in like sparkly, like glittery, like bikinis, perfect makeup, perfect hair, and just like filming themselves. Like, okay, that doing... is a whole nother thing, yeah. That is nothing to do with what we were talking about, like being presentable during the day. You we were no, because my point is like, it's so funny, like. I'm never going to be that girl. <laughs> yeah, no, but I never want to be that girl. True. Like, hell no. We were having the best time. Ever. We were dancing, jumping in the pool, having fun. Mad. Sorry, I don't want to be that girl that's like full face of makeup. I never even wore a dot of makeup. Like, I don't want to be too. that. I just want to be like, I'm on, I want to have fun. Like, I don't want to yeah. be like selfie. That's why I'm terrible with my phone and Instagram content because it's just like, what, who wants to be that person? I think it's sick that we're not like that as well. Yeah, we're having fun. We're enjoying our life. I feel like we're I, that girl on the right time. Yeah, you yeah. Right I feel time. like as well, as you as you get older, you want to just have fun. more. Like I remember, the younger I was, the more I was like, oh, I want to wear makeup at pool parties, etc. But now I don't, I don't give a fuck. I just go with nothing. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Just, as you get older, you want to enjoy your time more than care about what you think. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And sorry, but if a guy wants to come, if you're doing it for men. A I man's going to want to be with better, like, fun energy than someone that just looks great and just stands there. The most pretty. attention I got while I was in Dubai is a day I came out to a pool party. I'm not joking. With not a drop, not even a dab of concealer, nothing. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, what the fuck? Yeah. But anyway, I mean, uh, let me tell people about my time in Dubai. Yeah. There's not much to say. Mm. Uh, um, I just had an amazing time, obviously. Like, I loads of nice dinners. Um, I just... 
I just love Dubai. Someone said, list a few things, that, places in Dubai that you've been to because they're interested. My favorite place ever in Dubai for dinners is Verdi. Yeah, um, it pops off. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed White Beach, to be honest. I liked it. Um, it's very big, but it's really nice. Um, obviously, Cove Beach is like one of our favorite places. Where else? We went to Bagatelle. I love Bagatelle on a Saturday. Clap is a new restaurant in Dubai. It's really nice. Food banging. Banging view. Um, so yeah, I just absolutely love Dubai. You know yeah. what it is? I just, there's energy in the place. Like I, I looked in the restaurant and I could see the waiters like between themselves, like dancing. Then everyone's just happy. I feel like in the UK right now, everyone's very miserable. miserable. There's something in the air. And it's like the cost, it's the cost of living here is ridiculous I know it's, uh, it's my mum's mortgage has increased like my dad's mortgage increased yeah like, no one could afford to live like yeah it's actually a joke it's like, like honestly I went to Mark Spencer's I say these things and I I, I I literally bought like free things and it was like 17 pounds I was like what the fuck it was like free things yeah Dubai is expensive as well not it's the same really. it's actually it's, the same I think it's a, I think it's a little bit cheaper minus the alcohol alcohol in Dubai is ridiculously expensive like it's way more expensive than here but other than that I think everything else is a little bit cheaper yeah I agree but also people aren't struggling over there to get work and jobs and, and, and also make money you, half their money isn't going to tax exactly uh, the, the government there actually looks after its people yeah so. whereas here it's like my mum's pension we went to like take out her pension and they were like, well, 70% of it is getting taxed. Yeah. Even though it's already taxed money because it's her, from her income. And then they were like, what did they say? Oh, the rate has changed now with yeah. what with pound. Yeah. Oh, I, the don't, fuck I, don't know, I don't know. I don't know what they the were talking about. The rate has changed. So it's even though it was like this much, it's actually like this so much, much lower. Bro, where what? What's going on? It's like the government here wants to fuck you. All the, the only time. good thing about the UK is the NHS. NHS. Literally. That's Literally. It. Other than that. And even that, like, I don't even know. I haven't been sick in a long time, touch wood, but I've yeah, heard some wood. bad things about, like, you can't even see a doctor. Really? Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Um, but yeah, overall, it was really nice. I was away with the girls. Uh, Mandy stayed arms. So me and Mandy shared a, a bed, a bedroom. Um, so basically, we got, like, a three-bedroom apartment and... Oh my god, the maggot. <laughs> yeah, the maggot. Tell them about the fucking maggot Some, story. One maggot ruined our time, yeah? So basically, in my cousin's room, she saw this little, little maggot. On the ceiling. Don't get me wrong, our apartment was a really nice, like a banging apartment, yeah? Um, but there was a tiny maggot on her ceiling and she called room service, or not room service, the reception, and she was like, there's a little maggot in the room. And they're like, pest control! Pest control! You need you to, to leave. leave the apartment. And we're like, it's just one little maggot. Like, you have to pack all your stuff and move to another apartment. Do you know how long it takes to unpack all those shoes, those bags, the outfits, makeup, like all the stuff. You don't realise like how long it takes to unpack. And we were like, we had to pack everything again and, and then move. unpack, move to like five floors up. That's and like the hardest part, packing and unpacking, no? And all because of a tiny fucking maggot. <laughs> Other than that. Like, Other than that, but the only thing is like, would you, if you went out, with, went on holiday with your girls again, would you prefer to stay in an apartment or a hotel? I don't know, man. Hotel's nice because like, obviously you come in and it's all clean. Every time you walk into your hotel room, they yeah. clean it. But the apartment was nice because we're going to each other's room and we were like cracking jokes. We have a living room. Exactly. We can sit in the living room. You chill in the living room too, have a cup of tea, make yourself a sandwich if you want a snack. Like, that's the good thing. But you know, I don't know, the, <clears throat> the luxury kind of experience of a hotel, because I went from a hotel with Gingerbread to staying in the apartment with my girls. I missed like the kind of service you get at a hotel yeah. when I was there. But I don't know. I feel like if I went to an apartment again, it would have to be one that like, has cleaning cleaner. every day. Yeah. And also like one where at the pool, they serve you because that's like my number one thing. I need like to be laying, sunbathing and ordering like latte, food. Yeah. yeah. Everything. Does that exist though? Apartments that have that? It must I don't know if they do, but anyway. Um, so anyway, it was a really nice overall trip. I did obviously on the phone have like a couple of arguments with Cowslick. I think he was very like stressed obviously about me being away. He missed me. I missed him. We missed each other. So there was like a few <laughs> arguments while I was there, which was like really ridiculous and stupid. Yeah. Um, but solved, came back. I think back. he's just like me. He's just such a possessive control freak. Just he's like very me. overprotective. Right? Yeah, he's very overprotective. Like literally checked my bikinis before I flew. Like checked my suitcase. I'm as psycho as him and it makes me feel like I need to change. Like Gingerbread's opposite. He was like, 
babe, I want you to like be with your sister and your cousin and your friends. Like, I, if you really want to extend, like I'll change your flight so you can extend and stay with them. Like, he was so chilled while I was here, like completely yeah. chilled. Whereas I would be the other way around. I'd be crazy, just like Kowsnik. Yeah. But you know what I realized though? It made me think that like, I want I want my love to change. Like, obviously there's like selfish love sometimes. And I feel like I've got more of a selfish love. I want to be more of a... So, like, I want you to be happy kind of love and I care about your happiness. people always say, like, true love is when you want the other person to be happy. I don't know. There's all kinds of true like, love. Do you believe that? She's like, obviously you want the other person to be happy, but sometimes, like, you can be a bit more selfish and still true have true, true love. True love. Yeah, mine. My kind of love. Yeah, because you truly love Gingerbread, but you're a bit more selfish. I'm like that as well, actually, I am, but now I want to try and... Be more mm, selfish. Yeah, like, I want him to have fun with his friends. Like... Because I, I like to have fun with my friends and I'd hate it if he ruined it. Yeah. That's it, to be think. honest, it did. Like, there was times where I'd be at a pool party, like, literally, you'll call me within 20 seconds of us being like, babe, babe how are you? Did a, like, he'll find something about I me. I think he did kind of... And then, yeah, he did ruin it, ruin to be honest. Holiday. I'll be in Cove Beach. I was in Cove Beach crying. In, why like, should that even be happening? While I'm, like, literally just five minutes before having like, a laugh with my friends. Why should that be happening? With all the money you save and spend to go on holiday, which is like a rare experience, like you said, for everyone to, to be able to do that. Why should someone be able to even ruin a second of it? Yeah, and another day it was like, oh, you, you didn't message me as soon as you woke up. Like, ridiculous stuff like that that we'd end up arguing about. But he should think, like, I want her I want her to be happy. And I think it's true. It all does come down to, like, trust and paranoia because when you truly, truly are confident oh, in yourself... trust me. But I trust Gingerbeard, but I'm still, like, I'm a paranoid person. Like, mm. when you fully, fully, like, trust someone the way you trust your family, you no, wouldn't be like No, I that. don't know about that. Because I fully trust Cowslick, but, like, I'm still, like, for example, with his work, and he's in a bar till... He works in a bar till, like, 3 o'clock in the morning now, yeah, 2.30. Yeah. I, like, I trust that he's not doing anything in that, but I just don't like the fact that he's in that environment. It yeah, bothers I get me. you as well. Yeah, so, because you know I'm I mean? the same because I trust Gingerbread, but I would hate for him to be in that kind of so environment. So it's like, I don't know. It's not, I don't know. It's not about trust. Um, but anyway, guys, I was meant to stay in Dubai for a whole 10 days. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and then imagine this, like, I get a message at the beginning of the week, like from my agent saying, oh, there's an event for you to go to. It's a paid event. And it's like basically three days early from when I was meant to come back. And we were like all debating whether we should come back, whether I should go back for it or not, or stay the whole time. And I ended up coming back three days early to go to this event, uh, which sucked. So I didn't stay the whole time I was supposed to stay. Yeah. Even though I paid for the accommodation the whole time. But anyway, it is what it is. Um, but, we're going to be living there soon, so it's all good. Right? It's a matter of time. Manifesting I that. I caught my flight after a pool party drunk. Oh my God, I yes. don't know how I fucking did that. Packed and went to the airport drunk. Oh my God, by the way, on the way there, the luggage situation is... Stansted Airport in London is actually the shittest airport, I must say. Yeah. And when do they ever check hand luggage? They never ever check hand luggage. You check it, they, they weigh the... They, sorry, when do they ever weigh hand luggage? They weigh what you check in yeah. and that's it. But this time in Stansted, apparently, they check hand luggage. And my mate, she goes first... They basically weighed her both of her stuff and they said that it's over. Yeah. And the poor girl ended up paying 200 pounds. 200 fucking pounds? Yeah. So listen to this. Then I went after and they were like, you're over on both, right? So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to take things out. And then I realized when I was out taking things out, I was like, wait a minute, this is your hand luggage, right? It goes, they don't even tag it. And send it off. And you go, you can buy whatever you want in duty free and stuff it with an extra 10 kg and it doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah. So I was like to my mate, hold on to these things around the corner. Wait, go there. They can weigh it and then I can just go put it back in my suitcase, yeah? And that's what happened, yeah? No, well, that was what I did. But then when I went back to the counter, this time I went to a guy instead of a bitchy girl and the guy was like, I'm not going to weigh your hand luggage. Don't worry about that. And that woman over there, she was like, no, but, you know, no, no. He was like, I'm not going to weigh it. Don't worry. So that was fine. And then I, my poor mate spent 200 pounds. Do you know how I'm pissed off that they did that to her, you know? Pissed off. That's not right. She was just some Karen bitch. Proper. And my my girl, she, she got into that situation. But anyway, can we just talk about what's happened to me in the last week? Oh my God. Yeah, tell them. Like someone tried to break in to me and Gingerbread's flat. Like fully try to break in. See the flat. difference between like Dubai and London. Right? We as soon as you get back, this this first week we're back, someone tried to break into her house. Someone someone literally had been putting tools 
oh my God, it's on my TikTok if you're going to see it, the video. Like someone was putting tools trying to actually break in. They tried so hard, but they couldn't get through the door because our door's like solid. But that's how fucked up London is becoming. Like that's how broke everyone is. It's so scary. I've been really scared. There's no, you know, excuse. Being broke doesn't make, there's no excuse to, True. to breaking into people's houses. I've been so stealing. scared, yeah. Like, I have, haven't been able to sleep. Every single sound, I get fucking paranoid. Me like, too. I live on the ground, I live on a ground floor flat and the other night it was quite hot and we were in the living room chilling, me and the cow's lick watching a movie and he was like, I want to open the, the, the door, the back door. And I'm like, no fucking way. Don't open it. I'm scared. Yeah. It's like two o'clock in the morning. And he's like, what do you mean, babe? I'm here. Like, no one's going to do anything when I'm here. I'm like, what are you on about? Like, if you're here, like, I'm scared. If, like, what, what do you mean? What if four guys come in, run it up with knives? What Isn't are you going to do? Don't worry, babe. Don't get it twisted. Oh, you know, like, oh, God, oh, God. I don't go on about it. Because I don't talk about it because I don't like talk about it. But it doesn't matter. I was like, what if it's like some six foot five guy? He's like, they've been bigger than me. Um, I could. Oh God, oh, don't, God don't, please, please don't. No, give when me guys cringe. do that cringy shit, don't do that. But um, me and Gingerbread are so scared. He's sleep. We're sleeping next to a knife. No way. There's a knife, a massive knife in Gingerbread's drawer. Like that's how fucking scared we are. No way. But I mean, it's scary here. I, know. I don't. I'm scared to wear my watch. Like, if I go out in London with my watch, I always hide it now. Like, what yeah. the hell? It's There's ridiculous. girls in Dubai with like hundred grand watches, like having a stroll at night. There's nothing happening. Yeah. We're here just selling Dubai right now, but... Um, I know, right? It's just how we feel right now. I don't know what it is. I it's know, just how we feel. I know. There's nothing really funny or fun that happened in Dubai, like, apart from that. Like, I know. you. I think everyone expected, like, a lot more drama from us, but there wasn't... There's not that much drama. I know, right? <laughs> but, I mean, actually, do you know what? A few things happened, but I, 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 I can't even talk about them. What? Like, there's some things that, that have happened that I can't even talk about because... But maybe, you know what? There's a lot of things in my life, actually, that I can't talk about. And one day, I will look forward to talking about them in the podcast. Something's got to stay secret, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, since I've been back, um, obviously, it's taking... Uh, I'm trying to get used to being back. I'm trying to get used I, to, like, being back on the podcast. It feels weird, isn't Doesn't it? It feels I really I feel like off. our flow isn't on. No, but why? It's what a month off and like already our flow's off. Because you get into the you get used to things and you know, it's like being in the gym. We have to exercise it. <laughs> yeah, I just feel like our flow is a little bit off, but it's like, I feel like the problem was that as well, because when you're doing like a catch up episode sometimes like this, yeah, it's like we have to like catch up on so long, like a month. Yeah, and then we've got like structure to it in our in our notepads and in our heads as a structure to it and like that's what loses the flow. But when there's a really good catch-up episode, it's when like me and you don't see each other for a week. Or no, we, we, don't, we don't talk properly for a week. We don't see each other for a few days. And then we get on here without talking to each other at all before. And we talk we get on it. here and we just talk. Because those conversations are like real, real conversations. Not that these aren't real conversations, but this is us more telling you guys. Yeah. Because we've spoken about these things. Do you exactly. get what I'm saying? Whereas, the best ones are when we're speaking to... But that's the best thing about our podcast is that our conversations are so like first time real and kind of like... Natural. natural. So I want catch-up episodes to be like that. Like a week. I'm actually telling you something for the first time. Yeah. But like not much happens in my fucking life anymore. Like I'm literally like at home. Well, me, since I've been back, I had to change my telephone number, my mobile number. I've had the same mobile number for the last bloody 10 years. And basically for the last few months, every time I'm chilling on the sofa with Cowslick, like I'll get a message from a guy like, hey, how you been? Or Imagine living that life. Or once I got a guy messaging me like, hey, I really want to spoil you. Oh Some fucking God. weirdo that I, I met once, yeah? And like, these guys don't give up. But then at the same time, it's like, they don't really know that I'm in a relationship maybe properly because I don't put it out there on my social media. Some of these guys don't even have Instagram, don't listen to podcasts. And it's it, because it's like guys from so long ago. Some of them it's got not the same like, guys messaging you. It's not the same guys. Some of them were like from seven years ago. One of them was my ex from when I was 22. It like, it kept happening. And like, Kalslik's like sitting there. He's like, what is going on? Yeah, if I, I was want... Kalsik, I would fucking flip. He was like, how are guys keep messaging my girl? It's pissing me off. And I was like, I actually understand where he's coming from. It's not nice. I wouldn't like it if I'm sitting next to him and girls keep messaging him. No. And it's like, why do so many people have your number? I'm like, I've had the same number for so long. And like, when I have times when I'm single, because I'm never hardly single. Yeah. When I am single, I get really excited. So I give, goes my, out. I give my number to like everybody. Like, my, I give my number out really easily. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. So... I've got a new number. I'm the same and then I just block them after because I just hate saying no. 
That's what I used to be like. <laughs> yeah. I hate saying no, so I just give my number, and then when they message, I block them. So yeah, I've got I've got a new number. It's really weird. It feels I weird. I have to update it on everything. It's like really long. Good though. It's a fresh start. My number's quite new. Yeah. I had this weird phase I went through where I changed my number. I'm not joking. Like six times in one year. No way. Yeah. And the last time was two years ago because I kept breaking up with my ex. Oh, yeah. Changing my number so he couldn't get through to me. Changing my mind and going back to him. And then having to like change my number again when I broke up with him. That's funny. That was a madness. But yeah, um, before going away as well, I remember when we were talking about how I was like, I was moaning about having a gummy smile. So I got my Botox done at the medical clinic. Hersha, I've said it before. She's amazing. And Amanda said to me, it was you that said yeah. it to me on the podcast, you can get Botox here. Did you do it? I did it. Let me see. Like, oh I don't know God, if you can notice yeah, in my... I can. When I laugh, it's not as gummy, which has been amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but your laugh is so cute. You've got the cutest laugh. I hate laugh. my laugh. It's like, <laughs> it's so cute. It's so weird. Every time I listen back to the podcast and I hear my laugh, like, <laughs> I think it's so cute. Um, but yeah, um, guys, the amount of people that came up to me in Dubai, like girls and guys that were like, we listened to your podcast. I, I couldn't believe it. Like, I actually was shocked. It's the best feeling ever. That's so amazing. It feels amazing. It so, feels so much better than when they say, oh, you're, I loved you on Love Island. I know. It's I'm because... excited for season six. I am excited for season six. My favourite ones to do, obviously, like Dilemmas. I, I just love listening to Dilemmas. Yeah, they like, are the best. Relationships, sex. And guys, I wanted to talk about, about my, like, I didn't get my lashes done in the end, but because I was meant to get my lashes done. No, but I'm glad I didn't do them lashes because you know what? The more I look at girls that have lashes on, I'm just like, uh, I don't really like it. How can you not rub your eyes? Like, I need to rub my eyes in yeah. the morning. Like, But I'm really excited because I've been getting my, if you follow me on Instagram, I've been getting my tattoo removed on my eyebrows. Um, from I got a tattoo when I was 16 in Iran, um, which was horrible. And then I got microblading, which I didn't like as well. So I've been removing it at this studio called Namas Studio. Really good. I think I've got one session left and it's going to be gone. Which I'm going to be doing soon as well. Honestly, it's the best. I can't wait. Yeah. Um, guys, they gave me a code if you want to use it. It's called... It's, they messaged me saying, if your followers or listeners want to come, you can give them a code and you get a, a discount. I don't even remember how much you get. Discount? <laughs> What's the code? I don't remember. Can I use but, your code? Um, the code is ANA50, but it's A-N-A-50. So, I mean, if you are interested, then do it. I just thought I'd share that with you guys. So it must um, be 50% off. I don't know how much percent. So I've got like a fucked up shake from microbrading that someone did for me years ago. And I hate it. Like, it's like some weird sharp arch that I always cover every time I do my makeup. Yeah, so you should go to them. They're yeah, so I am going to them. Good. They're so good. I can't um, wait. But yeah, and I'm really excited as well to go and get my eyebrows laminated after I remove the tattoo. Baby, my lady. Yeah, I'm really excited. Don't forget what I put you on to, yeah? Brows by Diamond. Yeah, and basically the next few months, what we've got planned, we've got we've booked uh, we've booked a trip to Mykonos, me, Mandy, Gingerbeard and Cow's Lake. Yeah. And then we're going to go Cyprus. So it's exciting. We've got something to look forward to. Yeah, I really, really want this whole like seeing our family from Iran to happen as well. Like... Oh, we haven't seen our family from Iran for so long because obviously we can't go there. They can't get a visa here. It's been, what, like six, seven years? Horrible. It's really horrible. And so, like, Gingerbeard has his own place in Cyprus. So I'm thinking, is there any way that we can meet them in Cyprus? Maybe it'll be easier for them to get a visa to Cyprus. And obviously, because it's such a massive villa, we can all yeah. stay there at the same time. It'll be so nice. So we're trying to organize that right now. Yeah, I'm it's trying. Just, like... I really yeah. hope we can. That would be amazing. That would be amazing like, to film as well the first time we see them after so long. Yeah, it would be so nice. Um, I'm also, in July, 33 years old. I can't believe it. I can't believe I can't, it either. You look so good. Like, touch it's wood. actually scary that I'm 33. Like, actually, like, this week, at one day, I was at, feeling so weird about it. I was crying all day. What? All day. From the moment I woke up tonight, I was crying and Cows, it was so there. About what? I was on my period. I think I was just feeling, I just got back from Dubai. I think I was feeling really emotional and my hormones were all over the place. <laughs> and it was just a feeling of like, oh my God, I'm going to be 33 in a, over a month and I'm not where I want to be. That's in, what it is. Where I want to be in my life. I'm not where I imagined I was going to be in my life. And that's the feeling. Yeah, well, that, everyone's timeline is different. It's like, yeah. it's, you can't, there's no right time for success. There's no right time for marriage. There's no right time for kids. It should because all happen. in my head, I had the right time. And you know what we talk about regret and all these regrets that I have. And if I did things different, I would be probably where I want to be. And like all these things that were in my head, I was just having a really bad day. Yeah. I don't want to say I was having 
anxiety all day because I don't really want to keep using those words, but I was just having a you stress. You were. <laughs> I was having bad anxiety. I was having bad anxiety. Yeah, I was having bad anxiety I that like day. It's age where I'm like. I need to remove the fucking tattoos on my eyebrows. I need to start my hair journey and repair it from the years of extensions and damage. I need to remove these horrible keloid scars I've got from fucked up botched surgeries. I need to lose the weight that I've put on in the last year being with ginger beer, the relationship weight. I need to, it's all fix, fixing, fixing. Everything needs to be fixed. It's like, it's like repairing the damage that I've done to but myself. For me, it wasn't even all those things. For me, it's more like... The finances that I fucked for the last year and no, two years. for me, it's more like in my head what I thought I was going to be doing and being like, I thought I would be living in my own home. I thought I'd be probably married by now. I thought that I would be I don't know how you traveling. thought that when you just like... Well, I did. I In my head... I had when so I, many relationships. What do you mean? I always thought when I was 33... <laughs> by the You're not saying of, when you were like young, you always looked and thought when I'm 33, that's where I'm going to be. I just hoped that by the time I'm 33, I have my own property, I'm married, settled. I don't want... No get kids, yeah? yeah. But I just want to be settled. Even though I am settled, I'm not where I thought I'd be. And, you know, I just... It's just traveling the world and stuff like that. I agree. But I'm not. But anyway, I don't think anyone is, man. Who the fuck is? Do you anyone that's watching our podcast right now is exactly where they want to be? Yeah, it's true. But you know what? Some a woman messaged me, and it was really nice. Um, someone wrote, oh, "I need to find it." Actually, she was a lady, and she was like, "I'm in my fifties, and my husband passed away a few years ago, and it's I horrible. need to get." Yeah, she was like, "I need to get back onto the dating scene," and she was like, "You." podcast makes me feel so good makes me feel so happy it makes me feel like there is no age to anything you know that you can be lost at whatever age and you can start fresh at whatever age and I truly believe that even though I might have moments where I am upset I snap back and I remember and I do believe that no matter what age there isn't a time where you have to be married or you have to have a kid or you have to do this or you have to do that you can be in the club at 60 I'm not one to judge and I don't care yeah whatever makes a person happy you know, it's just, I have moments, you know. Yeah. It's like your insecurity. In general, you're a confident person, but you have moments where you're feeling very, very insecure. Yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying. Like, I imagine myself to be in a different place at this age as well. But like, it is what it is. Do you know what I mean? You I can't mean, let yourself get swallowed up by yeah. your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I got... And the negativity. Th there was someone that, some troll that messaged me on it and they were like you need to do a podcast on your failed love life and how you still don't have a child in your 30s. Who the fuck was a child? Wait, you were busy doing women's rights activists on Love Island and look at you now laughing my ass off. Compare that with someone else who is successful in her career and her love life. Who? Less, doesn't matter. I don't want to say the name. Lesson for all young girls. If you want to be a women's rights activist, then go ahead, but don't be surprised when men just use you and abuse you. Oh, wow, this person's really fucking sad. Anyway, it just made me think, you know what? Firstly... If I want, the thing is, if I really wanted to do it by the book, like, and get married and have a kid in my 20s, I could have done that 10 times over. Yeah, I've had too. relationships in my 20s, which were actually good boys. Yeah. But I chose not to settle for a reason. And if I, I, I don't regret that. I don't, I don't regret not settling with the good boy that was I, marriage material. My biggest flex is that I'm nearly 30 two and I don't have kids yeah I'm, that's I, my biggest flex I would never ever change the fact that I've not had kids yeah like I don't want and even now I don't want kids yeah me too like I enjoyed <laughs> my me. oh my god that's the first thing I should have said in my podcast I don't want kids first thing I did when I got to Dubai was do a pregnancy test oh yeah and I was it was not pregnant and I was jumping up and down in that hotel room like a crazy person because like or whatever makes some people happy some girls love having a kid early for me it was never for me and even now I don't think about kids. Like I'm too busy enjoying myself. When we have to think about the dogs when we do things, imagine having a kid. You can't do anything without no, having no, no, to put them first. I can't, me too. I'm it's not ready for that. And no I've, way. I've enjoyed my life. And people that say failed love life. I think we mean like success in like our own life and in, in relationships. Yeah, even, Maybe like that's how you feel where it's not where you imagined it would be at this age. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you know, even that when I really think about it, it's like, I am. I should. I feel like most people that fucking settle down at young age, they were they was all fucked anyway when they get older. Exactly. Oh my god. Even a, even marriage and 
when I when I say when I was 33, I want to be married, I wouldn't want to be married before the age of 30. Personally, I don't want no, to. No, I don't think that's a good idea like, yeah. for us. I mean, everyone's different though. There's some people that are married in early 20s or whatever and they're still so happy. For our personalities. Yeah. For, for our, our personalities. personalities. But when people keep trying... You know when we write, like, put clips on Instagram and TikTok and people are like, this is why they don't have a boyfriend or this is why no man takes them seriously or this is why they... But we could have... We could have got married about 10 times by now. Yeah. But like, the thing is... I also think now I've lived with Gingerbeard, I realize how important it is to like live with someone before you marry them. Yeah. Like it's important to really know that person inside out. And you need to know, can I live with this person for the rest of my life? Like that's the question, right? Mm. Can I live with this person for the rest of my life and be happy? Are they making me happier? Yeah. So it has to be going in that direction for a while before you say the vows. In my head, I always thought I never want to live with someone before I get married, like that's the my that was my thing my whole life. I was I like, I don't want to live, live with someone before I get married. But now, after living with someone, it's like I've changed my mind so much now because there's habits that you pick up, like people have that you don't see until you're married. You know, it's just so different when you, when you live with someone. Yeah, but it's not just living with someone though. You have to be to, before marriage. You have to be living with someone happily. Mm-hmm. But, like I could live with Gingerbeard for three years, miserable up and down, toxic, fights. Why should those two people get married? Those two people shouldn't get married. You have to be living with someone happily for enough time to then get married. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So you can have a happy like, life So you can together. have a happy life. Like, touch wood, things have got really good, obviously, since I went to Dubai with Gingerbread. It's been on the up. Like, things have been really good, not arguments. It's been a lot more respectful and hopefully it carries on that way. And it's got to carry on that way for them to be like, oh, look, we can actually have a happy life together to then take it to the next step. So, I don't know. I think a lot of these people rush into relationships and rush rush into marriages, and like it does, divorce rates are so high anyway. It's just crazy how people see a failed life as not being in a relation in a relationship or having a child. Yeah, that's mad. That that that, that even brainwashes me. I am a I am a victim as well, of being brainwashed. But that, that's I get so sad when I think, oh my god. Some, sometimes when it hits me like, oh my God, I'm 33 and I'm not having this or having why, that or having that. Most, some, some people are fully accomplished, mm-hmm. fully accomplished in their life and they have no kids, no marriage and they're what, like 50. If they're happy, that's an accomplished life. That's a fulfilled, full circled life. Yeah, it's not about having a kid and being married. No. It's like, it's like this person's comparing me to a young girl that's got a kid that's in a, in a long relationship. How do you know what like you don't their know what's is... go- you don't know you don't know what's going on in their house you don't know what's going to happen in however many years you know you don't know what anyone's life's going to turn out you don't know if I might be married in a few years and happily settle down with a kid like you don't know anyone's life so don't ever sit there and judge and, and I think whoever's watching this as well if you aren't in, found someone or if you don't have kids or aren't settled down like doesn't mean you're not like where you're supposed to be. I think that's what's important. I think you don't even have to have someone. You should be happy on your own. If you, until you find happiness on your own, you're never going to be happy with someone anyway. Exactly, because I tell myself that because it's very important and I know that. So it's like when I have moments where I, I, you know, I become paranoid about my life, it's like I tell myself that and I remind myself, wait a minute, Anna, don't be stupid. Look how lucky you are. You have the most amazing family, friends, you know, you're doing, you're growing, you're happy. That's the main thing, you know? I think what really bothers me the most, actually, is like that I know I'm not fulfilling my potential and I'm not like, I could be more successful. I could be working harder for my future. And that's what really upsets me. Otherwise, fuck the rest. Fuck the rest for real. Like, fuck the rest. Anyway, <laughs> that turned into a conversation suddenly. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, we're really excited to be starting season six. We've got loads of things. We Season five, the embarrassing episode. It was my favorite. Embarrassing stories episode. We never did that before. It was the first time, but it was so funny. It was the best one. It was the best one. So we decided we want to do that every season yeah, because it was so good. We're obviously going to continue with the relationship dilemmas, the sex dilemmas, the friendship dilemmas. We always do those. Yeah. Um, and we've got like loads of little things that we've got planned for you guys but like I said let us know if there's anything extra you would like to see drop your comments let us know what you want thank you for everyone and we love you guys whoever's on this journey with us up till now up to season 6 like honestly I love you guys yeah we love you so much thank you thank you so much bye bye bye